Hello. Wow. They've given me a microphone and a screen so I can say what I want. And I'm going to start now. Um, hello. My name is Dan Fordham. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to our product demo here in Singapore. And we're going to share some updates from the Nanopore family, and we're going to discuss some of the great science as well. Again, I'm Dan Fordham. I work in strategic product management here at Oxford Nanopore. And um, I'm going to take you through what we're going to do today. We're going to share some updates, and then we're going to bring on a special guest who's going to talk to us about some conservation sequencing. If you do have any questions, please do hold on to them and bear them in mind, because we'll try and come to them at the end. Um, so I'm going to talk about some product capabilities. Um, we're going to have two focuses. We're going to focus on the end-to-end -end product, the end-to-end -end product um, offering that we have here at Nanopore, focusing on human and where we're able to go from sample through to extraction and then through to analysis. And then we're going to also talk about Org One, which is our critically endangered species biodiversity conservation project. We're going to talk about sample and library preparation, and we're going to help you to get the best out of your precious sample and try and answer any biological question that you have. We're going to talk very briefly about data analysis. We're going to highlight some of the um, human variation workflow that we have, and um, we're going to give you some insights into how to harness the best of um, nanopore sequencing. We'll then shift gears. We're going to talk about Org One. We're going to talk about a critically endangered um, species. And we're going to hear how, um, how an expert is using nanopore data to put conservation into practice and hear, um, hear their thoughts too. Now, I understand there's a vast landscape of things that you're able to do with nanopore sequencing, and especially with ONT. So we're going to try and um, address those today. So in order to um, unlock the optimal insights that you get from the human uh, promethine device family, we go from all the way from the P2S through to the larger promethine devices at the back. And it means that higher quality human genomic data is more accessible to everyone. So all of these devices are powered by our powerful promethine flow cell. And this flow cell is able to produce up to uh, 200 gigabases of data, depending on your sample and depending on your application as well. Additionally, the capacity and output of these, of these promethine devices mean that we're really able to scale to um, production sequencing as and when you want to do so. So if you take, for example, um, a, a one-year project, if you were looking at 30x, you could produce 5,000 human genomes with one sample per flow cell. If you wanted to really go big and you wanted to do, produce 10,000, then you can do that 15x, and that's two samples per flow cell, all with the base calling now performed on the box and um, in integrated if you need to as well. And with that amount of data, the possibilities are endless. But as we all know, great data is, um, and great nanopore sequencing relies on great DNA extraction. Um, so the nanopore community and the uh, online nanopore community is filled with great tips and how to maximize your impact and uh, maximize your extraction as well, and how to optimize your sequencing depending on your goals. So for example, if you wanted to go for option one, you can produce high coverage um, DNA sequencing with an M50 of 10 to 15 KB. Um, but if you want to follow our now published end-to-end -end protocol available on, the, on our community, then you are able to use the KIT-14 and produce the N50 around 30 KB. And as ever, most, most of our protocols are now automatable. And if you're interested in talking about that, Jade is sat right there. Um, obviously, a lot of people are very interested in the ultra-long reads and ultra-long protocol as well. And here at Nanopore, we defined ultra-long reads as those, as those reads and um, uh, sequencing experiments where the N50 is greater than 50 KB. We, there are also examples of people being able to produce reads up to four megabases, but um, you can still do quite a lot with uh, 50 KB and above anyway. So if you start to tie all these things together using um, our, our throughput of our devices, the ability to go long and ultra long, then you can also start thinking about duplex, simplex, ultra long, and putting this together into telomere to telomere or chromosome scale human assemblies. And what this does is it brings us all closer to um, gapless, complete 
human genomes for everyone, and this is what democratization of sequencing actually means. So we're going to also talk to you today and zoom in on um, adaptive sampling. So if you want to focus on particular genes, um, SNPs or SMVs or methylation, um, then we, we recommend you can have a look at adaptive sampling. Now, adaptive sampling will give you finer control of your sequencing experiments. Through, being a, through our ability to um, individually control pores and um, align them in real time, you're able to sequence and target or enrich or deplete your sequencing as and when it's being sequenced. So this is a method of software-controlled targeted sequence enrichment where you're able to target in silico and with the software without actually having to do any further sample prep or sample ma manipulation um, upstream of your sequencing. This means you can focus chromosomes, you can focus on chromosomes, you can focus on genes, you can focus on panels, or you can focus on a subset of all of those as well. And this enables, enables you to actually start to focus on a limitless number of options when you're, when you're thinking about designing your experiment. But it's also worth remembering that, again, there is no extra sample uh, manipulation or um, sample prep required. The methylation as well is maintained, as well as any other, other epigenetic modifications too. And this gives you better insights into the kind of sequence that we're interested in. If this is, if this is not a, of interest to you, then whole genome sequencing is still available. And with Kit 14, you're able to get sequencing accuracies of 99%. You're able to get read, reads above Q20, and we're able to get consensus accuracies of Q30 and above. But this is, again, this is from our simplex sequencing. And the good thing about simplex, simplex sequencing is that it is perfect for high accuracy and high throughput sequencing. It's perfect for analyzing SVs, SMVs, and methylation, um, which is pivotal for rare disease, infectious disease, and cancer research too. We are now also starting to support an increasing amount of duplex sequencing. And this duplex sequencing allows us to produce higher accuracy read M50s, not read M50s, higher accuracy reads, for, which are beneficial for whole genome assembly, which builds a really strong base in, um, to take your um, sequencing on further. It's worth bearing in mind that duplex sequencing is still computer and um, sequencing intensive. So before you do it, before you undertake it, I suggest you have a specific goal in mind. So um, we're going to talk briefly about our epitome platform and um, what we're able to uh, do with this. And um, deployable version of our human variation workflow. This next flow implementation is um, great for calling SNPs, SVs, and methylation. And um, is, you, can, you can call it from command line or your intuitive GUI. I recommend if you have any interest in this and any interest in bioinformatics, you talk to Stephen Rudd right here, who will be able to talk you through it in a much better way than I can. Um, so uh, he's always available. As I mentioned before, nanopore sequencing has many, many applications. And um, if you want to speak about any of them, please come find me afterwards. I'll be very happy to talk to you at length about almost anything, apart from bioinformatics and automation. Thank you. And with that, um, we're going to shift gears again and start um, talking about um, Org1. Org1 is um, Oxford Nanopore's uh, biodiversity and conservation program. It's powered by Oxford Nanopore. Um, the goal of it is to try and help to arrest the biodiversity crisis by offering, um, oh yeah, by offering free kits and consumables to anybody who has access to a critically endangered species um, on the proviso that they're able to upload the data to an open database within a, within a decent amount of time. It's recognized that um, the biodiversity crisis is ongoing, and we try to do what we can about it. Um, I'm very proud of what we're doing with Org1. So again, if you want to talk, to it, talk about it later, you can come and speak to me. So now I'm going to welcome up our special guest. Um, joining us now is Regine. Yeah. Hi, thanks, Dan. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm very grateful for Nano for that be here. Thank you. You're a student at NTU University here in Singapore. Yes. And you're interested in sequencing the critically endangered um, hawksbill turtle. And um, would, would you like to speak, tell us more about it? Yes, I'm a year for um, PhD student at Celsius at NTU, and my main research focus is to understand the population genomics of the critically endangered hawksbill turtle, which they nest here in Singapore. Super. 
Um, and uh, do you have any background on this sample that we're sequencing at the moment? Yes, so this sample here is from a nesting mother that lays eggs in Singapore. I find that really fascinating because the fact that this species is critically endangered and we see them nesting here on our narrow and small beaches, um, it gives us an opportunity to study them and also play a role in their conservation. That's great. Um, do, you have any, do you have any reason why uh, genomic data is useful for you? Yes, so with genomic data, we're able to look at the true genetic diversity of the species. And a lot of times, um, studies of this species only uses the mitochondrial DNA, which only looks at maternal haplotypes, or the microsatellites. And so with whole genomic data, we are able to look at the close relationships. And because this is a critically endangered species, we believe, we believe that they have a higher rate of inbreeding. And with genomic data, we can also look into their inter interrelationships between individuals. So um, genomic data is not widely used within conservation as yet. What do you think the barriers to adoption are for it? Yes, yeah, so for this species, they are found nesting in Southeast Asia, where a lot of the researchers do not have enough funding or access to whole genome resources. So I think it's a great privilege that we have them here nesting in Singapore, where we can use next generation sequencing to study them. Great, and do you have anything else you'd like to tell us about while you're here? Um, we also do have a side project where we are looking at the metagenomics of their nest. So we do see infections occurring in their nest, where um, previous studies have looked into fungal pathogens, and they have been also found in um, nests of other species of sea turtle worldwide. And we would like to see if that is also a main cause of um, mortality of the eggs, which will influence the hatchling success rate here in Singapore. And ultimately, we want to contribute to conservation of this species here right in Singapore. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And say thank you to Regine. Thank you. So sadly, we're out of time to now. I'm just going to summarize quickly what we'll be doing. We've had a look at the capabilities of the promethion. We've had, um, we're also focusing on the capabilities of the promethion flow cell. We've focused on the endless possibilities that we're now unlocking with nanopore sequencing and an end-to-end -end workflow. Lastly, we've heard from Regine and, um, and her excellent work on the conservation of the critically endangered species and the hawksbill turtle. Um, I'd like to thank the applications team here in Singapore who have been instrumental in everything we've done. And um, I'll now pause for questions. Thank you.